Okay, so we have that main car. Now, do I want to start actually with some large shapes? No, we'll start with the main car. We will start with the main car. I'm going to start with the windshield. I know it's crazy, but this is how I'm going to do it. Um, we can make a more accurate version later on. I know what I'm doing is a bit crazy. I'm trying to innovate upon myself. Um, so that would be the windshield. And I have a damp brush. I don't need it to be super wet. I just want uh, to blend this a bit. Something like so. And that will start making up that windshield. So this goes here. And this is flat. And this is a straight line. And then from under there, we'll start bringing in the front of the car. Now I may have painted it too large, that's fine. Then we're going to move down here. There's actually some highlights for the headlights of the car. Kind of missed one, but I'll I'll leave it like that for now. And I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. That's how I feel like painting right now. So sometimes you have to give yourself what you want. Um, so, and then we have a dark shadow under the car. And it's really fun to see the car appear. That's the thing I'm after here. Can I make it appear in front of us? Just like that. There's a very thin shadow underneath. And I think a bit of a wider base there, if I'm not mistaken, which will let me actually bring back the headlight here if I really want to. And I know I'm zoomed out a bit. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. I, I do want to show the overall picture. I don't really want to zoom in at this stage. But this would be a car. Um, this would definitely be a car. Now, I do want to maybe, and this is hot press paper, by the way, feel free to ask any questions. So if I use more water and I kind of go like this, by the way, if the, if there's any problems like with background noise, I can close the window. It's currently open just because it's nice outside, but let me know I can close it. Um, so, we're going to paint the street, the ground level, like so. It's not white, even though it's light, it's not white. And it kind of ends around here. Then we have a bunch of dark details. And then it goes almost to the edge of the paper. So this starts establishing the ground for us. Uh, so if we imagine, we do have the mirror here. And then if we imagine, we see behind it, so the car there has a bit of a shape like so. Uh, let me zoom in. And uh, what I'm doing off paper isn't as important right now, actually. OK, now I see all your comments. Yeah, I like uh, paints great, too. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of warm paintings, so that's the only problem I sometimes run into with it. It's, it doesn't match a lot of my paintings uh, color scheme. Now, so around that windshield of that car in the back, there's a big highlight in the center, but then there's here you see a bit of a mid-value there. Uh, that other car, there's another pretty major car here. I'm just going to go for it. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I may end up being a little quiet for a couple of moments just so that I can focus. Uh, but let's see. So this is a tire. It goes like this. Connects to the shadow underneath. And we do have the front of the car. These aren't the easiest shapes, but what I'm trying to show you here is that 
you can really develop these as you go along. Uh, so if, if the shape is inaccurate, because we're not doing any sketch basically, it's okay, you're not married to what it looks like. You can improve it if you want to, if it doesn't look right. Uh, you don't have to worry about it being perfect the first time. Uh, but you can kind of um, carve it out as you go along. Uh, actually, hot press paper can be an advantage in these instances um, because it is quite malleable, the, the paint, that is. Um, now we can add some cool details here, almost wet and wet. So let's see what we got here. This kind of a thing, we have a bit of a darkness here. These windows, all the bottom section and the tires. So that was a little sloppy of me, sorry about that. Shadow here. And all of this front bumper area. A bit of a shadow here, I would say. And we got another car. We're good. So I'm going to move uh, ahead and paint the car that is closer to us. So let me just figure out the perspective here. Uh, I can even drop a few of these lines to kind of help guide me through. So we have this ground and it goes like this all the way here, which means that car is going to be somewhere around here. So that's good. And then there's a distance here, so about this area, and I can start dropping in that other closer car. So let's see what I can do here without any sketch. Top of the car aligns with the top here. So that would be the left side of the car. So let's see how we can carve that out. So this is quite dark, the window. Gonna drop that. We can add a few highlights uh, later on, by the way, bring back some maybe shapes that were a little harder to maintain. That's the bottom of the car. And you know what's so funny? I wouldn't be f opposed to just leaving the ground as light as it is now, just as a fun, fun thing to do. Um, and we're gonna close up all of this and this and we'll leave this small highlight under the windows. Now this is cool. So this line goes ahead and then ends in a sharp kind of shape. This moves down, goes around. Now we have to make sure we get the distance right. So this is one, two, three, about a third. So it should end somewhere around here. If I'm being a little careful, we'll see how how it'll go. I want to leave some lights for the headlights. Like so. Now again, you don't have to paint like this, but I'm just trying to show you how, you know, the way most are used to painting. Uh, you also don't have to paint that way. You can really build it up any way you want. And that's what's so fun about watercolor, you can get away with so much. Um, like me getting away with messing up this gap here. There should be a gap here. I'll bring it back later with opaque paint. Here, there should be a gap. Maybe I can... Uh, there, I don't know if there's any point in lifting it, but that's fine. Let's make this dark. Um, close up this entire middle section. The reason I'm doing this black and white is because it is easier uh, when I'm doing something that's a little more, you know, complex than usual. But you see how it's a car, right? You can start kind of tell. Uh, now let's let's rework this area just to make sure it's dark enough where I want it to be. I almost want to say, okay, this area is done. It's perfect. Um, so we have this. This looks almost like a police car. I'm not sure though. And then this connects here. We will have a bit of a shadow, a bit of a shadow underneath. To me, this is one of the more meditative things I can do, really, um, to paint this way. It really, really brings out something special. Oh, 
I'm pre-wetting so that I can visit the area around it and get a nice smooth transition. See? That's really fun. So I don't know, you tell me, is this... It looks like a car, I guess, right? I think it worked out. It's a little stumpy in the front, but that's fine. I can widen that area just a bit. We may actually... Yeah, that's good. And I would say the front here, um, just to show it's rounded, I can just add a bit, like so. See, that gives it a feeling it's rounded down. I really like that look. And now we can get the car behind that one. That's something I, again, enjoy doing. It gives more context. So I'm gonna grab a bit of a darker paint and then we can work in relations to that car, you see? So we can see that this window, there's a mirror here side view mirror and then if this leaks in that's fine but I can tilt it a bit if I don't want it to let's say the mirror is here somewhere with a bit of a highlight on the other mirror and look here we're gonna kind of close off that car by painting the car behind it right and again, you can mess this up, you know, if you're worried, man, this is harder than drawing. It really isn't because you get a chance to look on paper and see what's going on there. That's to me the fun part. So we can look at things in isolation and kind of say, okay, does it look right? Is something off? Whereas if you have a sketch ready to go, you're already constrained to that in terms of your imagination. Uh, that's how I see it. Sometimes, you know, not always. Um, so yeah. Now, so we have another kind of a nice pattern here. And then this goes like that, kind of a shape. Close off this bit. Maybe there's a bit of a highlight there. We're gonna close off border that front of the hoops. Touch that, that's okay. Um, leave a little light under the headlight, like so. And also here to the side, it goes a little lighter. And once we put in that windshield, it's gonna close off another happy car. Now, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna, I think in a second, take a quick, quick break to see what you're saying. How do you decide what to paint? I have so many reference photos, it's hard to pick what to paint first. Honestly, I think that's kind of, that can be some kind of form of avoidance. Um, I do, because I've painted for so long, I know exactly what I like painting, so, I always, uh, I always, I have a good sense of what I feel like painting next. And even though there are some pictures and when I took them, I was sure I'm gonna really enjoy painting, they sit in a folder because I don't feel like now is the moment. Um, so that is fine, that happens. Um, but at any given moment, I can open up my folder and find something that I know would make a good painting right now. Uh, I so I'm sometimes wrong, but usually I get it right. Um, so I think it's not really about what you paint, it's your kind of feeling and how how you feel about painting it right now. And if you don't know, then it doesn't matter, you know? <laughs> if, you, if you don't care what it is in particular, like in Alice in Wonderland, if you don't really know where you're going or where you want to go, then any direction will do, right? Sometimes I think about it this way. So now we'll have a bit of a tire and a shadow underneath. So that's another car, right? You see, as simple as that. Um, making some stronger shadows there. Uh, so we do have this car here close to the edge. I'm gonna add that in quite simply. I do see there's a roundedness. And then it goes um, down like this back like that, goes down all the way into the tire and then there's a shadow under it, tire goes like this, this goes diagonally and then we can start darkening what's needed 
So here's something interesting. This is a larger, so we can just put the shadow around the center of the tire. And it will look pretty neat, I think. See how it reads as a tire. Hopefully you can see it. I know it's a bit... Um, Then a window, whatever, get that in. There's actually a tail light here. I'm gonna keep it light. There's another, here, these are the most fun ones. So behind that, there's another car, but it's basically just a windshield. So it's a windshield, <laughs> goes kind of like that. And then the front, and then a bit of a shadow underneath. That's a car, right? So it's it gets easier the smaller they are and the farther they are. Uh, so now we have this car. Let's start placing some stuff behind that. Sorry, the light and shadow will shift a bit here. It's okay. The sun is... It's a bit of a confused day. Uh, it's not sure if it wants to be warm or not. So I'm going to start with the shadow under the car, actually. So this is the shadow. The tire is coming from that. Then uh, all of this front part is in the... Sh it should be smaller. I kind of exaggerated it, but that's fine goes here, goes to the side, side of the car. Again, I'm really, I, I don't know exactly how I'm placing it. This is too much, by the way. I don't know if I'm, I'm not as accurate, that's fine. Um, we have the windshield kind of here. That would be a car to me. It's not a perfect car, but it's a car. Of course, these are darker. Side of the car generally is darker. There's a window here. What I'm looking for is I'm just trying to paint a, a, a scene like a theater almost. Uh, the theater really uh, does a lot, plays a lot of tricks on you, right? Things look uh, like they're there when in fact they're not. Uh, things look like, you know, the stage can look full of stuff, but basically there's not a lot and most of it is just fooling your eyes. So that's the kind of thing I'm going for. Maybe these are a bunch of cars kind of together and a bunch of cars way at the back there. So I'm going to try and simplify some of those details in the truck window. It's a little higher up. Now our, let's say, bigger risk move would be um, darkening the ground. But it will pay off, you'll see in a second. But first I would like to... Yeah, I started putting the truck and then I realized I'm going to need a mid, mid, medium value for it. And then the shadow is going to be on the top of the cabin here. Maybe a bit here. See, that's going to be a truck. But we'll give it a moment. What I think I'll do next is build everything around the scene. Um, so I'm going to start putting in the buildings and such. Um, no real good way to do it other than to get started, uh, so bear with me. I'm going to try and focus so that I don't mess this part up. We'll see how it goes. See, I'm, I know this tall building is above this car, so that's where I'm starting. Uh, so I'm going to go like this. That's a good starting point. down. There's a building that looks a little like a hotel there. It's actually just a normal building. Now you'll notice this goes down all the way almost to this car. But then what will happen is we're going to switch to a bit of a darker value because there's a lot of foliage there that I do want to convey. Um, so I know this looks strong. It's actually quite weak. We're going to make it much stronger for all the foliage down here. And you see shapes that are in proximity to one another. The edges mix together and it, it looks really nice. Some of them maintain their position while others move and flow a bit. Uh, that's a part of the beauty of this kind of a scene where the background is quite uh, simplified, I would say. And it's not as, doesn't have to be religiously accurate. Um, so there we go. And you'll start, you'll start seeing a cityscape. That's just how it works. You'll start seeing, you know, buildings and details that's not there. Because of magic, you know. 
how can I say this otherwise? Uh, now we're gonna get a bit of a lighter tone because this here is like a um, kind of metal fence or something like that. I'm not sure. Along the highway or road, goes a little lighter, and it kind of closes up here. So you see, we started. We have this frame, and then it goes back to some lighter values too for um, this section here. So this is gonna be a shorter building, I guess. Not as tall. few details. Now I'm placing the details that way because I'm going to fill in the blanks with darks. Like so. This is going to be a relatively quick, I think, painting process. How long have we been going for? About, oh, 42 minutes. Okay, not bad, not bad. What's, what is important here is just to make sure the tops of the cars make sense. So we can, of course, edit stuff later on, um, bring back highlights and lost details, but uh, just generally speaking, I do want it to look good right away. So let's make this other car lower hanging. I think it was too high to begin with. Uh, let's close off some of these buildings. I think after I finish this skyline, uh, I'll take a quick break and uh, let me know if you have any general questions about watercolor or this process as well. Uh, and I'll kind of take the opportunity to address them. Uh, bit of foliage. Now here we get to this little truck. I do want to make sure I leave a highlight for the top area above the cabin. So a bit of a highlight here. And most importantly, leave this area clean like so. It has a bit of a V-shape there. It's funny how as artists you don't really have to know even what you're looking at to paint it. Um, you can just paint it. It's pretty fantastic, I would say, how that works. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff there, but I'll keep it simple. Hey Megan, how are you doing? I'm gonna read in a second. Just need to concentrate for this next bit. Truck, there's a dark detail here that I left this area blank for. I don't even know what that is. I have no idea. I saw it there. I still don't know what it is. Uh, there's a bit of a dark shadow here. And the, the most important part is going to be... Uh, this is too low. So, I think around here. Yep. And that's going to close off the entire left section. Again, you can shape it as you go along. You can place some paint in. If it's too dark, bring back water. If it's too light, bring back more paint. This top of the sign here. This side of the sign, I suppose. The top part of the sign is light, that's fine. But if the bottom is dark, bring in more dark paint. More water, because I'm kind of losing the flow here. But you really can carve out these shapes as you go along. See, there's a lot of foliage here, so this should be a little darker. The side of the signs, pretty dark. Let's get that in. Um, this here, there's a gap. I shouldn't have this gap. This is kind of a building. Let's add a few details there to the floors there, something like that. This is a little dark. There's a street light here. Well, we can get more details in that later on. But you see, the scene has appeared, <laughs> right? Hopefully you can see it. Uh, you can even still do wet and wet here. It's pretty crazy. This is still workable. So I can just add, see here? This is really cool because it's hot pressed paper. I can still kind of add details and have them be a little erased by the wetness that stays on top of the paper. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you know what? This starts to look like something. Now this sign does have some lights above it, so I'm gonna add those in. And there are a few kind of individual details, and I think there's a lot of details on the rooftops of some of these buildings. I went a little too dark on some of them, but that's fine. Let's darken this bit. Um, let's go like this. And here I kind of lost these details on the floors balconies, whatever it is. And you see, without even stating things blatantly, you can kind of tell what we're looking at. 
so we have, right, uh, we have the road there that needs to be darker, at least some of it. We have this uh, fence, whatever that is, needs to be darker. And some details on the cars. So I'm going to start with the part that is perceived as the hardest. It's going to be the ground. I don't want to go too dark, so I'm going to be a little careful here, but not too careful. So this is going to be kind of our starting move. And then we will move this paint all the way here. I think somewhere around here it lightens up a bit. So first we'll get that in. And then I'm just going to go back with some clean water and see what happens. I'm just going to stretch it up out to the right so that we get something that's a little darker but honestly barely noticeable. Now what we're doing right now does is it makes the highlights on the cars mean something more than they currently are because we're eliminating other areas that are paper white. So we make essentially the highlights more unique. That's what happens. So you see already, boom, it has, the surface has a bit more gravitas to it. Now, the lower part of the fence is a wall. So this is actually a wall, right? And then there's a highlight and above that highlight, we have the actual, I don't know what you'd call this, but it's going to be in a pattern like so. So I'm going to place it in with a few gaps just to show that it's vertically placed objects. And as we move further and further, I'm going to make the gaps a little narrower. So that gives us the fence to the left pretty nicely. Um, there is a bit of a stronger shadow here under this. And of course here and here. So, and there are some of that as well. And that starts to, again, it shows up. Uh, is it, I think it's not dark enough. So let's do that. Just get some sections of it a little stronger. Yep, here we go. And so that covers this, that some details on the card. So let's see, if I feel like some details were lost, I'm gonna bring them in. Let's switch over to a smaller brush. So one thing I notice is there's a bit of a stronger separation here between the light and the shadow. This line's it's kind of there. There's not much to do. Uh, this one's going to be more in terms of the highlights, I feel like. This goes up like this. There is the mirror. It does go over this section. And we're going to see a lot of these small shadows in the windshield. Same here. There's a bit of it here too. But here you can start going into more of the nitty gritty. You can bring in the logo. Some more small details if you want. But really not much. We're not trying to overwork this thing. Still very gentle. Uh, let's see what we have here on this car. There's a bit of a V shape here. This front side, I guess you could go a little stronger here. Let's separate the tires and shadow underneath like so. See how cool that looks. I really like that. Let's do this here. Same thing here. And Let's see what we have with this car here. And don't worry, we're going to add some highlights as well. Uh, but we have the tire here. And again, this is perfect as is. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to bring out more sharpness to it, you can. Uh, if you want to keep it more vague, like it is right now, I like that look as well, a lot. Um, really depends on what you're trying to achieve. There's no real um, right or wrong here. With any of this, really. Oh yeah, there are a bunch of darker shadows here. I wanted to make more pronounced. I'm going to put these in very abstractly, actually. There we go. Just to show there's... Like this. There we go. This looks like a huge car, by the way, from behind there. And I 
think uh, we can put in the some of the highlights with like a white gel pen. We'll try. Sometimes it doesn't work as well, but on hot press paper it works well. So this, for example, and the one we lost on the other side. Uh, this one has pretty defined headlights. Now let me show you something cool. This is one of the coolest sections I was looking forward to doing. This little line here. See that? Shapes the window. This highlight over the mirror. See that? And for the door handles, check it out. Looks much better. We do also have the headlights that have a very distinct pattern. Same goes here. We have this kind of a thing going on. And above the cars too, you can recognize quite a few of these, you know, small highlight-ish details. This kind of a thing. Um, there's a hint of a separation there between the um, doors or windows. Here you can just celebrate, just put a bunch of headlights, you know, whatever you see fit. There's maybe a highlight here. Um, oh yeah, the, the truck. There's a bit of a thing going on there. We have the lights of the truck. I don't know if you know, but if you notice, but there are a lot of trucks with this pattern of light. It's kind of a V, reverse V. I've seen a lot of these here. Um, and honestly, wow, I kind of think we're done. Um, you can hint at more details, um, even at the back. So what I like to do, the way I like to approach this is I'll squint my eyes and kind of figure out, okay, where do I see stuff that I don't yet see here? So this is another sign. I can put the lights that are on that. Uh, there is a bit of a detail here. There's all of those small details on the buildings. There's this kind of a balcony-like thing up here. All of these details do add up. I don't know what that is. Could be a flag, whatever. All of these small lines add up. They build an impression. Maybe there's some, again, floor details here. I actually see some highlights here. I don't know what that is satellite dishes, whatever, something catching a highlight there. I don't know what it is. Um, if we look at this um, big street lamp, it's actually lighter. So what I can put it in and then kind of blend it out. So we get the same effect. This is quite strong up here. So I'm going to add that, make it clearer. Um, I do see some vertical lines crossing the cars even, so let's place those in. I don't know what, what is in here. There's a bit of a shadow here. And all of these small details, they add up and they make the impression more believable. Um, we could divide this. It's, it's stripped, but I kind of striped, uh, but I kind of like it this way. Um, but maybe on the farther end, so here. Maybe we can go like this, see? Just give it a bit of an impression there. Um, there's a logo of whatever company here. See all of these small details? They can look really, really nice. I would even make the contrast here with the foliage a little stronger. I know I should <laughs> switch over to a larger brush, but still, you know, it's not about the how really. It's about what you see and what you want to show the viewer, what you want to express. If you want to add a few car antennas for the older cars, go ahead. Let's do that. Bit of an antenna here, antenna there. See? To me, um, I would say this is done. Let me sign it. We'll see if, uh, if you want me to add something else. It's my weirdest signature ever. There we go. And yeah. This is what we've got. Uh, so let's see, let's see what you're asking. I could, you know, I could do this. Uh, Nancy, just wondering, do you ever venture out just to take reference photos or is it more just random when you're out and about? It is random. Uh, I walk with Worth uh, three times a day at least. Uh, so that's the perfect time. Uh, to me, that's the, I always end up seeing something cool. Not every walk, but at least once a week, I would say. I just, come upon something that looks good and I end up taking a picture uh, or if we're going somewhere in the car, whatever. Um, usually 
I'll find myself seeing something cool and taking a picture of it. That's usually how it goes for me. It's not deliberate. Let's take this over to the desk. I'm going to show you a bit more uh, and we'll, we'll scan it so that I can put it on the screen right next to us. To me, this looks good. Now, if I go back, you could almost think I'm holding up a, a photo that's printed or something. It could, it could fool you. I want to thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Watercolor Realism course if you get the chance. And by the way, I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon like I do in the end of the videos. I don't say it enough in the live stream. So thank you so much for that. And yeah, we'll talk to you again real soon. Till next time.